This is the Riveteer Rampage. I am immediately noticing this card is 99. This deck is $99. This is the cheapest or the lowest costed of all of the commander decks that we've reviewed so far, I will say. So we have Henzi Toolbox Tour. It says each creature spell you cast with mana value for or greater has blitz. The blitz cost is equal to its mana cost. Blitz says that you can cast a creature for its blitz cost. When this creature dies, you draw a card, it gains haste, and you have to sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. So it says blitz costs you pay costs one less for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Okay. So I think Hansi works really great inside of a commander, a partner commander deck. Where really like a Rograk and then another commander that costs free or is just really cheap to play. I think Hansi would be pretty cool inside there. Yeah. Seems cool. We'll see what they did here. So obviously there should be some sort of uh, reanimation theme with this. I'm I'm gonna tell you I'm a really big fan of of playing black, red, and green. I think that this color combination is great. We have a overgrown battlement. Let's go, Ben. Operations considering smugglers shares in that deck. You're 100 percent right, dude. That's a great removal spell. That's one. That's like a. It's like a. That removal spell is definitely worth. Oh, thank you for liking the video. Whoever liked the video, I saw that. I appreciate it. We have a uh, a weathered sentinels. This is a new card. Defender vigilance reach trample. Weathered sentinels can attack players who attacked you during their last turn, as though it didn't have defender. Wow, that just seems like a. Fiverr. <laughs> Weather Sentinels can attack players who attacked you during their last turn. Okay. For two for two damage. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus three, plus three, and gains indestructible. So you get five trample damage. Because you attacked me. Okay. I mean, I think that we immediately take this card out of the deck. I don't know if I really want that card inside this deck. Yo, I'll I'll go ahead and actually have the link right here for a more perfect America. I will just drop this inside the chat right there. Let me actually just add this. Uh, yo, if you're watching this on YouTube later, I'm adding this to the uh, description, and it's there right now. So thank you for oh thank you for the other like. I just saw that pop up again. I appreciate it. Wow, you guys are liking the video now all of a sudden. <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. But there you go, Ben. It's uh, and. Uh, Oh, you guys are. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the uh, the white enchantment. This seems like a good card. You got a Disciple of Bolas over here. It's a good card. Easy to get. It helps you to get other creatures into your graveyard, you know? You got a First Responder. At the beginning of your end step, you may return another creature you control to its hand, then put a number of plus one plus one counters equal to that creature's power on first responder. This is a fantastic card. This is giving you the ability to put... I mean, I have probably seven commander decks that could use this card. Just being able to, for free, put a creature you control back to your hand to then use it again. This is great. This is a great card. Yo, what's good? All control repeat. That's a new face right there, man. Never seen that person before. Oh, oh, you're 100% right about that. Yo, if we had Luke in the chat, Luke, Luke plays Arcades. He would be going nuts about that card right now, probably. <laughs> Thank you for the other like. I just saw that. I appreciate that. So we have a, a Grime Gorger. So whenever Grime Gorger attacks, exile up to one card from each of each what exile up to one card of each card type from defending players graveyard oh man put a plus and plus encounter on grime gorgeous for each card exiled this way i mean this seems like a really cool card i just don't know if it really if you really want to play that inside this deck 
you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this seemed like a cool card. We have Jolene, the Plunder Queen. Whenever a player attacks one or more of your opponents, that attacking player creates a treasure token. If you would create one or more treasure tokens, it said create those tokens plus an additional treasure token. But sacrifice five treasures, put five plus and plus one counters on Jolene. I mean, gruel treasure tokens. That seems really interesting. I've, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's that seems great, actually. So we have a solemn simulacrum. When it enters the battlefield, everybody knows solemn simulacrum does. You got a team, a team or saber tooth here. What I'm noticing is that because of the team or saber tooth and the other creature over here, the first responder. You're basically going to be blitzing creatures onto the battlefield and then returning them back to your hand before they go away, which seems, which seems really good. Yo, this card, I want this card. This is my favorite card. I think out of all the cards that got released, the beam town bullies vigilance, haste target opponent whose turn it is puts target non legendary creature from your graveyard onto the battlefield under their control. It gains haste. Goad it. At the beginning of the next end step, exile it. It just seems like such a fun card. It just seems like such a cool card, man. Definitely building that commander. 100%. We have a wave of rats. When wave of rats dies, if it dealt combat damage to a player this turn, return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Is this four mana? I mean, that actually seems pretty cool. I like the full art version of this card a lot. I would play that card just because it's cool. Right? Oh, dude. Beamtown Bullies and Leveler. Oh, dude. That seems nasty, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look up. Remind, remind me to look up the Leveler after I'm done reviewing the deck. Just so I can show everybody. Show chat what that card does. So we have a World Shaper. Okay. We have... Ooh, that's actually pretty nice with uh, Blitz. We have a Bellowing Mauler. At the beginning of your end step, each player loses four life unless they sacrifice a creature token. Okay. A non-creature, a non-token creature. Creature token. <laughs> oh, cut this card. Um, Crush, the Blood Braided. We have whenever another creature is put into graveyard from play. Oh, this is a great commander. This is a cool card. It's a classic. We have Mezio Muggler, or Muggler, Mugger. Whenever it attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. You may play those cards this turn and spend mana as they, they were, as though they were any mana color to cast those spells. Blitz for three. That's a fun card. I don't know if it really needs to, if we really want to be doing that, but it seems cool. I mean, in the limited environment of just playing the pre-cons, I think that's fun. Yeah, the bullies, the bullies seems like a... <laughs> this commander over here is going to be awesome. So we have Thrag Tusk, okay. A Mitotic Slime, okay. Atali, that's, I mean, how many times have they re... And this card's 74 cents right now. How many times have they reprinted Atali and it's not 25 cents? I feel like Atali, every single time there's a new commander set, they reprint Atali. We have a Green Warden of Marasa. Where's... I want Zakama. Reprint Zakama. Thank you for the like. I appreciate it. Whoever just liked the video. Thank you. I saw that. You're right, Merrick. You're 100% right. Yo, Merrick. Merrick in the chat. I want everybody to know. Merrick has played Magic the Gathering for 22 years. Yo, I appreciate the like. Thank you for liking the video. I just saw that. Yo, Merrick has played Magic for 22 years. I just want everybody to know that. We have a Green Warden of Marasa. 
Greeting Warden Amrasa enters the battlefield. You may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. When it goes away, you may exile if you do return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. That's a cool card. Inferno Titan. Okay. I have a command. I mean, maybe we can do a uh, commander. Uh, I have a commander deck that really uses for Inferno Titan a lot. A Noxious Gear Hulk. That's always a cool card. Avenger of Zendikar. I mean, why not? A Deathbringer Regent. Okay. Giant Ataphage. Yo, there's a lot of... Well, you're kind of cheating. Thank you for the like. I just noticed that somebody liked. I appreciate it. Thank you. We have a Stalking Vengeance. Okay. We have a Tree Shaker Chimera. I mean, if this gets blitzed, that is just... Oh, man. That's such a cool card, man. To blitz this... Oh, I'm just going to blitz this for two mana. Um, all your creatures have to block this. What a cool card. Woodfall Primus. Ooh, that's a great card. Persist. So essentially this card reads destroy destroy two target non-creature permanents. Wait, this can destroy lands? Wow, okay. That seems kind of intense. Yeah, I think you're hundred percent right, Merrick. These 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 decks are pretty good. We have an artisan of Kozilek. I mean, okay. This is just a this seems nobody would ever I don't think outside of the limited environment, I think it'd be rare that people were gonna be playing this card. However, in a limited environment, because this this card is Annihilator 2. This card will just, just straight up, this card by itself will win games. Just by itself. Annihilator 2. What? <laughs> Come on. Blitzed? Come on, man. That's such a good card. Life's Legacy. Dude, that almost makes me think that you when you build this commander, you literally just... Play a bunch of creatures with Annihilator and then just blitz all of them. So then we have Life's Legacy, Rampant Growth, Terminate, Chaos Warp. Okay. It's a cool one. Painful Truths, Victimize, Migration Path, Aether, Snap. Okay. Oh, that's. This card is kind of just there because of the meta. Because they're going to be playing the other commander decks that have all the counters. This is a super meta card. <laughs> you, this just, th because this card exists, this just shows how ridiculous the other decks are because of all the counters that they play. That's the, that just, this limited environment is going to be intense with counters. So, choose three, you may choose one of the same. I think. Draw a card, lose life, deal damage. Okay, you get a land, all right. Wind Grace's Judgment, this is a really good removal spell, actually. Instant speed. You destroy three non-land permanents, that's great. A Blasphemous Act. Wow, dude, they reprinted Blasphemous Act a lot and it's still $3. Such a good card. Then we have Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Fell Warstone, Commander Sphere, Dodgy Jalopy. Power is equal to the highest mana value among creatures you control. Crew 3, Scavenge. Oh wow, Scavenge for 3? Question chat, does this... It says the power is equal to the highest mana value among creatures you control. Even when it's in the graveyard, it's equal to the highest mana value among creatures you control. Because scavenge for three, when you have creatures that cost nine mana, potentially on the battlefield, means that you could buff a creature by nine plus one plus one counters. Which seems kind of intense. For, th for three mana, by the way. Three mana. Seems great. We have a glittering stockpile. Yes, right? Yeah, Cole. Where? Seems good, man. 
We have a life crafter's bestiary, which will help you to or bestiary, which is going to help you to draw cards. We have an evolutionary leap. That's a fun card. Garrick's uprising. This card could low key win you a game. Next of kin. When a chain creature dies, you may put a creature card you own with lesser mana value from your hand or from the command zone onto the battlefield. If you do, return next of kid into the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of your next end step. That's so cool. That's a good card. I mean, I would play this in uh, my Prime Speaker Vanifar deck. Definitely. Protection Racket. At the beginning of your upkeep, repeat the following process for each opponent in turn order. Reveal the top card of your library that player may pay. So this is the... Okay. It seems like an interesting card. That seems like a fun card. I don't know if that really goes with what this deck wants to do, but it's a nice card to print. We have a Death Reap Ritual. See, this makes sense. If the creature died this turn, you may draw a card. Okay. That's cool. Industrial advancement. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, look at the top X cards. Ooh, I really want this card. If you do, look at the top X cards of your library where X is that creature's mana value. You may put a creature card from them among the battlefield. This is good inside of a deck where you're just taking your opponent's creatures and then just sacrificing them to uh, this ability. That seems really fun. We have Reign of Riches. When Reign of Riches enters the battlefield, create two treasure tokens. The first spell you cast each turn that mana from a treasure was spent to cast has Cascade. That's fun. Once again, like I'm noticing there's a lot of cards in here inside this deck that are cool. I just don't necessarily think that they work really well with what this deck is asking or wanting to do they're just cool to have that's just my an observation that i'm having at this moment we have turf war oh this is cool art when turf war enters the battlefield for each player put a contested counter on target land that player controls whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player if that player controls one or more lands with contested counters on them, that creature's controller gains control of one of what? That creature's controller gains control of one of those lands of their choice. So we're basically trading lands back and forth. <laughs> Wait, and is it only one land? If that player controls one or more lands with contested counters on them. Oh, gave control of one of those lands. Dude, I was going to say, oh, thank you for the like. I just noticed that somebody liked the video. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. But notice how we have, they put one of those lands. I think that would be pretty intense if they were just like, I just blink turf war over and over again. And then I'm like, deal damage. Give me all your lands. <laughs> That's totally something I would do. We have a war storm surge. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's actually low-key a really good addition to this deck. And I would put as many cards that had abilities like a Warstorm Surge inside this deck. I would, you know, I think that it's it's just, it's difficult to me. If, if I'm going to give this deck a, a, a score right now, I would give this commander deck a, a 7 out of 10 please understand this commander deck has a bunch of really cool cards but there's a lot of cards that just seem like they're just there you know that it doesn't really like this commander deck right here like this one like all of this flows all of these like literally almost every card flows together right everything here flows but like inside here, there's a lot of moments where I'm looking at the cards and I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I would keep.
keep that card inside the deck, you know? I don't know if I would play an overgrown battlement inside of a Blitz-themed commander deck, you know? So, if I had to rank them in order, I would give... I think that the Cabaretic Cacophony would be last. I would rank this fifth. I would rank the Riveteer Rampage um, fourth. I think that the, the Perry Commander deck, I would rank third. I would rank Unhello second, and then I think that this Obscure Operation is first, man. This deck, I mean, in my opinion, this just seems like a lot of fun for me to, to play. And the Unhello deck seemed really cool too, but this deck over here is just so synergistic that I think in the, in the limited environment, this deck is really going to... The card advantage that you get from this deck is going to be intense. And this costs four mana to play. And you got a lot of really good mana rocks. This deck is good, man. So yeah. My two decks for most synergistic from the box, Bant and Obscura. Yeah, the you're you're right. The the parry deck also seems and not only that that parry commander deck has a ton of combos where it's like I wipe the entire board on my opponent's side and I'm left with everything I control. So I think that that commander deck I think that Perry's gonna win more games than lose games you know if you're playing against a parry be aware that they may just wipe the board and attack with all their creatures you know which is a it's a it's a pretty powerful play 